of Tennessee. Recognize. Thank you, Chairman Brown, uh, and welcome to all of you today. Um, I'd like to start with you, Mr. DeFord. Um, first, I'd like to congratulate you on being named CMA's New Artist of the Year. That's quite an award, and it's great to see another Tennessean here at the Capitol, yes, so yes, welcome to you. <laughs> I'd like to stay on our state for a minute. Yes, sir. Our state is facing a grave threat from drug overdoses. In fact, we have the number two mortality rate in the nation mm. in Tennessee. Yes, and according to the Tennessee Department of Health, the majority of these overdoses are linked to illicit fentanyl. Yes, sir. Every time I talk to Tennessee sheriffs, they tell me that each month is worse than the month before it in terms of drug overdose and drug trafficking. And if I get to what's causing this, the fentanyl's being made from Chinese precursors that's coming into Mexico where it's manufactured there, then it's being smuggled across our southern border. In fiscal year 2023, Customs and Border Protection seized 26,000 pounds of fentanyl at the border. And that's only the amount that we're catching. Senator Menendez talked about the amount that we're catching at the ports of entry. Well, that's where we have sophisticated equipment to screen. But what's evident is with the rising death toll that we've got, more and more of this is flooding across our border beyond the points of entry. And we've got to use our resources across the entire border to stop the flow of fentanyl. I'd like to come back to, 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 to you, Mr. DeFord, and to your experiences here. Here in D.C., I think there's often a disconnect between what's happening in the bubble of Washington and what American citizens are actually experiencing across the country. I think your, your unique experience can help bridge that divide. I was very touched by your opening remarks, and in particular, your comments about addressing the demand for fentanyl as well as the supply. We're here talking about a bill that addresses the supply, but I would love to get your perspective on how we might address the demand. I know you've thought a great deal about this. Yeah, it's, uh, first of all, it's incredible to uh, meet you, Mr. Haggerty, uh, Senator Haggerty. Um, being a Tennessean, I am uh, very, very respectful of all that you've done for our state. Not only do we have the second biggest mortality rate, Nashville actually was the second dangerous, most dangerous, deadly metropolis in America for fentanyl behind Baltimore. I had a meeting with our mayor about it recently, and um, just to the actual demand of it, I think there's not a proper education about it. I don't think there's enough resources for people to learn about it. There's not enough affordable rehabilitation centers in the state of Tennessee. These are all things I'd love to talk about. I think we're scheduled to hang out with each other soon anyways, yeah. and uh, I would love to discuss with you, but I... Um, I, I have a I, I live in a very juxtaposition here where I understand the drug dealer and the addict because I have yeah. played the position of both and uh, unrelated. But to Mr. Kennedy's point, I agree with you, Miss uh, Senator Kennedy. I believe that chart is about as ass backwards as it could be. Excuse my language. Mm -hmm. um, but Mr. Haggerty, I thank you for asking. And I just I only said that I see this bill as truly helping stop the supply. But as always, the problem with Capitol Hill is that's a bunch of y'all in here fighting to fix half the problem, and we do have a whole problem here, Senator Haggerty. Well, I look forward to continuing our discussion about that when we meet together later today. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. I'm excited. Um, next, I'd like to talk about um, the way we deal with the, the, the sort of violations that take place with respect to fentanyl. On, on December 16th of 2022, Attorney General Garland released a new DOJ policy that restricts the charging of crimes with mandatory minimum sentences and discourages prosecutors from charging the most serious readily provable offense. The DOJ soft on crime policy states that, quote, it applies with particular force in drug cases, which include fentanyl traffickers. So my question, Mr. Yosef, to you is, what happens to law enforcement morale when prosecutors either refuse to prosecute or they minimize penalties that are sought for drug crimes, including fentanyl crimes. Well, I, I think there's a, a bigger picture here, and that is is that uh, you know, the majority of violent crime in every community is committed by a small percentage of people, mm -hmm. uh, and, and and certainly the the, the drug trade. That's certainly what the sheriff of yes. and and the chief chief of police of Memphis told me too. They know exactly who they are. So uh, it's, it's so that when we're when we're able to apply a pressure and take people off the street who prey on the people within our communities, we have an impact on the quality of life in the community. When we're unable to do so, uh, then we see the problems that we see in a lot of cities across this country. Uh, it is it is a, a challenge for law enforcement to to put our efforts into trying to make our community safe, only to see a revolving door 
of, uh, of, of the criminal justice system. It's something we've been speaking out for quite some time. We, it, at some point, we need to recognize that, that, uh, that, that what we're doing is not working. You apply enough pressure, it eliminates uh, some of this criminal activity, and, and the quality of life goes up. I'd like to just make one very simple point very quickly here. Does the failure to strictly enforce drug crime laws tend to increase or decrease drug overdose deaths? I think, I think it's just it's connected to every part of, of crime within a community, quality of life within a community, to, to, to somehow suggest that, uh, that, that recognizing the damage that's being done by, by the drug trade within our, in our areas and, and view it as a nonviolent crime uh, is, is, is not accurate. No, it's, it's clearly leading to more deaths on our streets. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman.